This video will discuss how to work with the logs feature in the plant log web application. Log records can be created here through a desktop browser or through the plant log mobile app, depending on whether barcode scanning is mandatory or not. But we'll be focusing here in the web application and you can see other videos uh, on how to create log records from the mobile app. So to get started, we simply sign into our specified site address using a desktop web browser. And once we sign in, we will automatically be taken to the logs page within the web application. This is the default page as the logs feature is the primary feature in the software. Okay, let's get started by viewing actual log records within the web application. Right below the navigation bar, which is the black section, is the toolbar here. And the selectors that you will see inside of it will just depend on what page you are. Here on the logs page, you'll see two selectors, one titled group and one titled log. So in order to pull up the historical data for a given log, uh, typically logs are, tr are tracking assets, you would first come to the group selector and pick the group in which the log belongs to. So let's just go ahead and pick the top one called chillers. And once we do that, this log list will automatically populate with all the logs that belong inside of the chiller group. So we can then just simply click on one of the logs to bring up the whole full history of that log. So let's go ahead and do another one. Maybe we'll go back to this group and we'll go to electrical. And again, this list of logs will change to, to show the logs that belong in this group. And let's just pick fire panel number six. And again, it's going to pull up the full history of this particular log, the fire panel. And it's going to list these records in chronological order. So to go over how these records are laid out, the first two columns are date and time. And this represents the date and the time that was recorded when the operator actually saved the record. When they finally completed inputting all the data and hit the save button, that will be the date and time that is shown here on this page. The next column is the name of the user, so it'll show you the person who actually did the record, created it. Uh, the next one is activity, and uh, if you recall, logs can have multiple activities assigned to it. Um, in this case, all these records are created for the daily round activity, so this is the operators going out and doing their daily inspections. But there could be other activities, such as a per, uh, monthly PM or a quarterly PM, where they will be doing different tasks or maybe taking different readings on that same piece of equipment. The next column is note. And so if the operator were to enter any optional notes, they would show up in this column and they would be represented by this little yellow sticky note. And if you ever want to read the notes that the operator entered, simply hover over that icon and it will show you the note that they've entered. And then all columns after this well, there will be one column representing every single item that was re required for the activity that the operator selected. And then you will see the values that the operator actually entered in. So this row that I have highlighted here, it's going to show you all the values that they've entered for the given readings or tasks that they did. And the values that show up in black are considered normal. And those that show up in red, as you can see here and here, are considered exceptions. And values that are considered exceptions are those that are outside of normal operating boundaries. Um, it could be, in this case, the uh, AR dryer status should probably always be on because as you can see, when it's set to off, it throws an exception. So it's con th this particular reading should never be in the off status. Um, these numeric readings over here uh, is a PSI. So if the actual reading is above or below the normal PSI, again, they will show up in red here. So this is basically how you view log records in the web application. Okay, let's look at how to add log records in the web application. The reason you might want to add records from the web application as opposed to the mobile app is in situations where your physical presence is not necessarily that important. Um, for example, you may be sitting in the control room of the facility in front of a computer 
uh, looking at several screens, monitoring the BMS system and other external systems. And there might be information in those external systems that you want to add into plant log and record in the software. So for that reason, it would not be practical to, to use a mobile device while you're sitting in front of a large uh, computer screen. So in those situations, you can add log records here in the web application. So let's go ahead and start this out. We will come up here to the toolbar and we'll hit the plus button up here in the upper right corner and click on add record. Okay, and we're seeing this message that says barcode mandatory. So the administrator of this software actually is telling us that in this case, for this particular log, fire panel number 16, they do not want the record recorded from the web application, but instead they require a barcode to be scanned. And barcode scanning is only supported in the mobile app, so we cannot actually create a record here for this log in the web application. So this is one key difference uh, from adding log records in the web application and the mobile app. When barcode mandatory is mandatory, it must be done from the mobile app because the web application being, uh, being used through a desktop web browser has no means to actually scan a barcode on a physical asset. So let's hit OK here and let's go to a log that actually does not require uh, barcode mandatory. So let's go to chillers and then let's go to a log let's go to refrigerant monitor number two okay so now let's create a record for this particular log we'll go back to the plus button we'll click on this and now we're taken to the add log record dialog so obviously barcode mandatory is not required for this particular log otherwise we would have gotten that message that we saw before so now that we get to this screen, the first thing we need to do is pick the activity that we're about to perform. In this particular log, there's just one activity called daily round. But like I mentioned before, there could be others like quarterly PM, monthly PM, things like that. And so you would pick the activity that you're about to do the tasks on or take the readings upon. So once you select the activity, the items down here will appear. And these will be the items that are assigned to the activity that you selected. So for daily round, we're going to get these four items and we'll just go ahead and fill them out. So here's the first item right here. Let's just say it's on. And now that we click on, we're going to see the options that we're allowed to pick from. This is a selection item and we're going to see a green check mark here. And this means that the value that we've entered is considered normal. It's an OK value um, and we're just getting direct feedback on that. The next item is a numeric item, so you're going to see this box right here. We're actually entering PPM, parts per million, so let's put in 45. And again, that's a green value, so this is a good value. Um, a couple things I'll note here is here to the right of these items are is a checkbox called inactive. And what this does is um, you can use this to indicate that you are unable to put in an accurate value. So let's just say you're taking readings from a particular screen and this, this item here, you can't, it's not providing you with a value. So rather than putting in 45, we can come over here and click on inactive and you'll see this row will gray out. And basically it's allowing us to skip this item without putting in an actual value. And this could be useful for when, well, when the value is not available or when you're not able to put in an accurate reading. So let's just say that you're in front of a gauge, an analog gauge, and that gauge is broken and maybe the needle is stuck. You would not want to put in, say, zero as a reading because that would throw off the trends and so on. So instead, just select inactive and you can skip that item. OK, let's go down to the next P at PPM and we'll put in 45 here. That's a good value. Uh, one more thing to note here is that on the right hand side, you'll see this little icon. It's a small letter I with a circle around it and it indicates information. So if you hover over this, you'll see certain information about the item that you're putting data in for. Um, in this case, it's just showing us the optimal range, which is from zero to 200. But if the administrator adds in other information, 
you would also be able to read that from here as well. So whenever you see these uh, info icons, it's a good idea, at least when you're not familiar with this particular log, uh, to hover over it and to read the additional information. There could be some uh, useful data there. And then finally, we'll go ahead and put in a value for the last reading. And let's just say that uh, alarm status we'll put on. And then notice that instead of getting a green check mark, we're getting a red explanation point. And that's indicating that this is an exception because that's what we're basically saying that the alarms, this, this system is actually in alarm state right now. So again, you're just getting instant feedback. And then finally, there's the note box up here in the upper right corner. So if you wanted to add in an optional note, you could do that here as well. Um, if the administrators uh, turn on the feature that says force note on exception, then you could potentially be forced to enter in a note based on certain items that you've entered that are considered an exception. But let's just go ahead and put in a quick note here. Let's just say this is a test for the video and we will go ahead and hit save. And now we've just saved this record and it shows up right here at the top because remember records are listed chronologically. And there we are right here at the top. We have the reading, our first reading was on. The next one, remember we set to inactive, so it'll be blank. Uh, the next reading was 45 PPM. And then finally the last one, the, the alarm state we've selected to be on. Uh, and that's an exception, so it's showing up in red. Let's now talk about how to edit a log record. So when a log record is created, either on the mobile device or here in the web application, they will all show up here uh, in this list. These, these are records that were created and have not yet been modified. And for the most part, they won't ever be modified because the assumption is that they have been entered in a correct way the first time. However, there are occasions where the information, maybe someone is reviewing the log records and they might notice a mistake, maybe an operator uh, misread a reading, um, or maybe additional notes needed to be, need to be added in uh, to further explain a certain situation. So there are times where you might want to edit a record after its original creation point. And to do so, you will simply come to the web application. And now this is only something that you can do in the web application. Uh, log records cannot be edited from the mobile device. They can only be created from the mobile device. And once they sync and show up here in the web application, then they can be edited by a user. So let's just say we want to we want to modify this selected record right here. We'll highlight the row and then we'll come up here and we'll click on the pencil icon here in the upper right where it says edit record. So now that we say edit record, we're going to be taken back to that dialog just like when we're adding a record. But this time we're, it's going to be filled out with all the readings and values that were already taken uh, at the time that it was originally created. And we can now modify the record in a way to make it more accurate. So let's just say that um, it turns out that the alarm status wasn't actually on at this time. This was a human error. Um, it really wasn't on, it was actually off. So let's turn go from on to off. So we've now removed that exception value and now everything shows green. Um, and now we can also say, we can add a note to this record. Let's just say false alarm was recorded. And so we're adding a note so that someone, when they look at it, they can actually see uh, some additional information. And now we'll go ahead and click the edit button. And anytime you're editing data in plant log, there must be an audit trail uh, to go with it. So we're right here, we're going to say there's going to, there's a box for edit reason, and we need to give a reason as to why we're making this change. So no data can be changed uh, in an anonymous way in the software. There has to be an audit trail associated to it. So we can just say we're making a correction. And now we can click save. And so we've now edited this record from its original creation point. And you'll notice here on the far left, there's a yellow pencil icon. Anytime you see a yellow pencil on the left of a, of a record, uh, it will indicate, it's indicating to you that this log record was edited from its original creation point. And if you ever want to know what was edited, simply hover over the pencil and you'll see a box appear that will tell you 
uh, who made the edit, when they made the edit, what they made the edit to, and what the original uh, value was. And of course, you'll also see the, the reason as to why they made the edit. So this is the audit trail I was speaking about. Anytime you see the pencil, you can always go back uh, to see that what was changed. And then as you could see in our record, we now have a note icon that wasn't there before. And there's that note that we've entered. And if we come over here to the alarm status, it now says off rather than on. So it is no longer an exception. So that's how records are edited. Finally, let's talk about how to export log records to Microsoft Excel. As a quick reminder though, the reporting section has many options on how you can view your historical log data uh, in more interesting ways. Um, for example, you could run a log exception report that would only show the log records that contain exceptions. You could do num numerical trending reports and so on. Um, be sure to look at other videos on, on how to use the reporting section. But for now, if you simply want to export the raw data of your historical logs, you can do that simply by coming up here and clicking on this button, the export to Excel. And if we click on this, you can see we have two options here. The first option is export current log records. And what this will do is only export the data from the currently selected log. So in this case, it's the refrigerant monitor number two log. And we can come down here and pick a date range. We can pick from one of the presets, or we can select custom and pick two different, a start and a stop date. And the records that fall within those, that range will appear in the Excel file. But let's just go ahead and pick a date range. We'll do uh, the past 14 days. And then we simply click, click export. And this will download an Excel file to your computer, which you can then open up and send to maybe an external party who doesn't have access to plant log and so on. Uh, maybe someone else wants to do some additional formulas with this data. Uh, they can also access it through Excel. And then the second option we have here, if we go back to the export dialog, we have a second option. And this is, says export group of log records. And what this does is allow us to select an entire group within your database and all the logs within that group will get exported into a single Excel file. So for example, if we were to pick the chillers group, all the logs that are contained in it will show up in the same Excel file and each log will be a worksheet at the bottom of the Excel file. So you can look at each log independently from one another. And other than that, we can simply set, select a date range again and then finally click export again and it will download that new Excel file. And that particular file will contain uh, much more information. It'll contain an entire group's worth of information rather than just a single log. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to watch other videos in this series which cover different aspects of the plant log software.